Welcome back to another edition of Off-Road Racing News. By the time you guys see this, it'll actually be the 17th of October of 2019. I actually did record this the previous day. Now, you guys are probably wondering why the dates. It's because October 16th, 2019 makes it the 8th year anniversary of the death of Rick and Jeff Huseman. To many of those who don't know who Rick Huseman are, who are kind of new to the short course racing scene, the dude was an absolute living legend. I got the fortunate, I got super lucky to, to see this man in person. The dude was a madman behind the wheel. And if you go on YouTube right now, you could literally look up Rick Huseman double front flip. And I think to my recollection, there is nobody else that could make or has made a double front flip. Not that, not that you have to do it to win a race, but nobody else has done it during a race. He actually didn't actually start right away in the in the top top of the classes. Not actually right away. He actually started in the very small classes. He actually started in the very small racing series for some of the old old school people that actually know the soda racing series before core. And um, around 2005, when he finally jumped into the Pro Four ranks, he actually bought a truck from Johnny Greaves, about a four-year-old truck, I think from, if I'm not mistaken, around a four-year-old truck, same Toyota power plant around this, around that area, and um, in his first season, not, believe it or not, in his first season, he got a couple of podium finishes, and he actually finished seventh in the point standings in his first season. Desert racing is very tough. Short course racing is very tough. You can't really say which is tough, which is more tougher than the other, but you gotta, you gotta keep in mind that's pretty impressive. Your first season in Pro Four to come within that type of range, that that's that's very very impressive. A couple of years later, he actually built his own truck, and then he finally got his first win. And ironically enough, it was actually at Antelope Valley uh, Fairgrounds. He finished sixth in that same season with six finishes in the top five. Back when core closed, it was actually like it was actually surprising because um we were all wondering where short course racing was gonna go. Um obviously for people know who know Torque uh came out of that, Lors came out of that. I've only attended I've only have attended Lors more than I have Torque. Yes, I have attended Torque a couple of times, but you know. In two thousand eight, he actually tied up with Carl Renazener that same year. In two thousand nine he didn't actually decide to go to Lourdes. He actually decided to go to Torque. Now, on that year, he won five of the six races, finishing the season with six wins, seven pole positions, and won the series inaugural championship. And he was also driver drivers in the series of the year for the 2009 Torque. In the following year, Torque and Lourdes, he won 10 out of the 15 Lourdes events, which that must have been that must have been a busy year for him because um as we all know the torque and the lore series they travel everywhere he had to basically just jump around left and right west coast to east coast because lore is primarily west coast as to torque is mostly in the in the in the east coast uh and in 2010 he was also named uh, Dirt Sports uh, 2010 Driver of the Year. He finished second by three only three points in the Torx uh, season standings. In 2011, he decided to run in just the in just the 2011 Lord Series. I don't. I I actually don't know why. I actually do not know why. After winning the first four racers, he added two more wins in rounds nine and ten. These wins eventually gave him the 50 victories. But then, unfortunately, he did pass away and at the end of 2011. Which is, which is kind of sad because this isn't the first instance, the first instance, my mistake, of, of a very legendary driver that has passed away in, in, in the racing industry. And um, also, rest in peace to his brother, Jeff. But... We also got in the death of Corky McMillan. We've got in the death of Jason Baldwin. We've got in the death of, of obviously, of Rick Huseman. And most recently, we have got in the death of Chad Ragland and Kurt Caselli. 
Um, so um, I thought there wasn't a lot of people posting about it. There really wasn't a lot of people posting about it. I saw it on my newsfeed. Yeah, people were posting about it, but um, I wanted to get it out there. I want more people to know about about Rick Huseman because you can't talk about Rick Huseman without short course and vice versa. The man was, is, and will forever be a legend. You hold his name up there amongst the other legends, amongst Carl Renazener, amongst Rob McCachron, amongst Jason Baldwin. You just have to. And it's very sad because he died at the very young age of 38 years old. I would have loved to see this man, to see how much more he would have been killing it and at the killing it at the Lorse. And also, who knows, he would have even done even really good at the desert. But anyways, I hope you guys have a great day. If you really like this video, please leave a like down there. It really helps the channel. And if you, you're really enjoying the content, hit the subscribe button and also follow me on Instagram for a daily, not only daily, but up to date and first at very first uh, news reporting of anything off-road racing related. My Instagram is at off-road racing news and also Follow me also on Facebook. My Facebook is Ernesto Morales. You can interact me with, with me there. And I forgot to mention this, but there was a Rick Huseman Memorial Cup that happened a year after he passed away. I was very fortunate enough to attend that with my family. It was very awesome, very beautiful moment. And I will leave a clip uh, once this, video, en once this um, video ends right here. I'll leave a clip at the end. And his truck, that was the last time his truck ever touched the dirt. This is Off-Road Racing News, signing out.